today's topic is um, embracing God, embracing source within you. Um, and, and that's a very interesting and tricky subject matter because for some people, especially for people who come from a predominantly Christian or very religious background, um, there are limitations when you hear those words. There are limitations that you're kind of conditioned to accept, that you're conditioned to believe in. Um, and I don't believe in limitation. I believe in being as open and as receptive as you can to the divine, to source, to God. Um, some people may not like the conversation or discussion around the idea of God. Um, but for myself, uh, I have a very different understanding of what God is. And I will explain that here um, in a little bit. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of go into some of the information and then give my own understanding. And then if you guys have any questions about the topic or anything that is similar or, or associated, I'm open to those. And before we, we end today, I will look through some of the comments to see if you guys have any interesting questions that might uh, help other people as well. So that way we can all learn together, right? Because we're all here together. We're on the planet together. Um, and so the point of these lectures is to help ourselves to move forward, to evolve, to grow, to understand. So that way we can approach our lives in this world in a much more loving and compassionate and um, accepting way, okay? So for today's sermon, what I chose to do is I actually looked back into some of the old gospels um, and there are various gospels out there and specifically the gospel that I'm gonna be leaning on today is one that was uh, shared regarding Christ or Jesus. Um, some people knew him as Yeshua. Um, there are other names that he's been associated or affiliated with, but I'm choosing uh, this gospel because it, it was an interesting beginning and I would like to expand on what was already started. So um, in the uh, gospel of Matthew, um, beginning, I think, at chapter 5, there is the Sermon on the Mount, which is Christ's beginning um, lectures and sermons to people in his land. Um, a lot of people may not believe or, or know this, but he actually spent a lot of time in his life studying abroad. Um, he traveled to different regions, areas. He, there's stories of him with the Buddhist monasteries. Um, there are stories of him in India. There are stories of him in the Egyptian mystery schools. So there are stories of his um, evolution when he was missing from the traditional Bible stories um, during his Middle Ages, so during his youth. Uh, so he spent a lot of time studying and learning and growing and evolving and understanding things because he felt it inside. He felt it within himself. But sometimes when you feel something and there isn't uh, a, a explanation, you need, to, you need to understand. You need to seek it out. You need to desire to know and, and understand it from more of a, of a conceptual or ideological uh, form. So he spent some time studying abroad. And after he uh, spent several years away from his homeland, then he came back and said, you know what, I'm going to teach everybody what I learned because I think they need to know this. I think they need to understand what I understand. Um, and so I'm going to start with that and then I'll kind of go into more of it. Okay. All right. So um, chapter five, and it's, this is part of the, uh, this is within the gospel of Matthew. And again, every, uh, there are various versions of this out there. Um, I tried to find one that I thought was within integrity of the language and of the, of the beliefs and ideas of the time because sometimes you can take words and you can translate them but people 2000 years later are going to understand those words very differently from people who might have lived during the period when they were hearing those words um so i tried to stick with um some books that were more within integrity of the the original um language that was used um, because i would like to have the closest translation possible um, but this is in chapter five so uh, taking note of the crowds he climbed up the mountain and when he had sat down his disciples came to him he then began to speak and this is what he would teach them congratulations to the poor in spirit heaven's domain belongs to them congratulations to those who grieve they will be consoled Congratulations to the gentle, they will inherit the earth. Congratulations to those who hunger and thirst for justice, they will have a feast. Congratulations to the merciful, they will receive mercy. Congratulations to those with undefiled hearts, they will see God. Congratulations to those who work for peace, they will be known as God's children. 
Congratulations to those who have suffered persecution for the sake of justice. Heaven's domain belongs to them. Congratulations to you when they denounce you and persecute you and spread malicious gossip about you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Your compensation is great in heaven. Recall that this is how they persecuted the prophets who preceded you. When you hear the words and you, you, you try to understand what is meant by that, without having had a awareness of the divine within all of us, without having experienced God in life, without having had uh, moments of understanding and, and gaining wisdom through the engagement of these teachings, it just sounds like very basic words that are used, but there's levels of understanding within each of those teachings. And something that I've gained over many years of seeking and trying to understand is that the moment you realize that you are God in form, the moment that you realize that you are a divine being here in this physical physical world, the moment that you understand the truth of who you really are, and then you begin to see life from that perspective, it opens up a whole nother layer and level of comprehension and understanding. Um, and so when you go back and you read the words of the masters, um, they take on a whole different spin. And it, it's that spiritual evolution. It is that development within yourself that is kind of a key that unlocks the true message behind words that were used, you know, t uh, 2000 years ago and so forth. So I've reworked those teachings so that I can kind of bring forward the meaning and depth of what was being said. And I want to share those with you now because I think that would help you understand what he was talking about or what he was trying to convey to the crowds and to all of his disciples and people who were seeking um, to, to be saved from their own human experience. So when I reworked these and kind of dug into the depth and meaning, a whole nother layer of understanding was presented. And so I'm gonna share those with you now. And I will make these available online so that y'all can use these as well if you want to. So this is my interpretation of what was said, okay? Congratulations to those of you who are questioning your faith and seeking within yourselves. For the material world offers only evidence of the divine nature and awareness which exists within you. Congratulations to those of you who know something is missing and feel a great loss from being human. Your memory of your divine nature beyond this human state awakens within you. Congratulations to those of you who observe and practice flexibility within your thinking, positions, and are open-minded. You will survive many challenges and feel a great responsibility for all others on the earth. Congratulations to those of you who are aware of what a human injustice is and desire for resolution on behalf of others. You will have many opportunities to provide resolution for humankind within your lifetime. Congratulations to those of you who practice compassion and forgiveness instead of expressing rage, anger, or avoid giving punishment. You will experience compassion and forgiveness also by the alignment of your being. Congratulations to those of you who have not forgotten your humanity or value the experience of compassion and love. You will experience and know the presence of God's source in this physical world through synchronicities and by the acts of other humans. Congratulations to those of you who work for peace and cooperation amongst our humankind. You honor the God consciousness that connects and exists within us all for we truly are one family. Congratulations to those of you who have suffered at the hands of other humans when you work to serve all of humanity. You are God being in form and will experience divine awareness and know the greatest expressions of love beyond this physical existence. Congratulations to those of you when, you when people call you evil, unworthy, or undeserving of existence and act against you through actions and gossip because of your spiritual beliefs and lifestyle. You have not been abandoned. God has not turned away from you. And understand this, your life experiences serve your soul's purpose and development. 
whether you realize it or not, you are honoring your existence as the experiencing physical form of source in this world. Your challenges will allow you to experience even more loving being, and you will see all of the benefits you've gained when you are no longer attached to your earthly mind. Remember also that this is how fearful, hateful, and ignorant people have persecuted humans who are prophets and exemplify the deepest forms of the God consciousness in this world. So it totally shifts the trajectory of the teachings because these are very, very evolved and spiritual teachings. But in that time, and during those periods when the original words were used based on the translations, um, a lot of people used words to share knowledge. Um, not many knew how to read or write. And so there are very, very, very uh, simple ways of understanding things. Um, and so people who spent time going to study at the um, Forum in Alexandria, for example, which is one of the greatest storehouses of knowledge that existed during that time, um, which apparently Jesus may have spent some time there as well. So um, most people do not understand that during that period, in that time, knowledge was an achievement and not everyone had the ability to attend a scholastic environment to go to a school or to learn from people who were very wise. Um, only people who either were connected or who came from families with money um, or who were of prominence could study and could understand. So when he traveled around during that period, um, and learned all of these great uh, spiritual wisdoms and teachings and then came back, he had to essentially dumb it down. Not because people were not intelligent enough to grasp his information, but because how they understood things usually happened through very simple and basic ways of, of, of understanding. And so he had to simplify his message. He had to reduce the context so that they could grasp the basics, just the basics. But when you start to look and dig and really just dissect the teaching, it reveals this whole nother layer of understanding about our place in this world and what he was trying to inform and, and help others understand and what most of us through experience or through hardship have gained through our own experience. The reason why I titled this sermon Embracing or to Accept God or Source Within Yourself is because I truly do believe based on the teachings but also based on my experience that we are all representative of Source representatives of source in this form. We are our God in living form. We are witnesses to creation. Um, there is no separation, you know, just because God existed it, and people believe that God exists as this old man on a throne in a heavenly plane doesn't mean that that is actually what God is. That is an interpretation of the divine. Um, when you begin to have a personal relationship with God, when you actually embrace the experience of God and, and, and allow yourself to have it, you start to see it from a grander perspective. And these limiting ideas and beliefs that we are taught in traditional religion, in the Catholic church, in the Christian church, um, and in, uh, in other religious practices as well, um, they're just simple. They're too simple. They're not evolved enough beliefs that help to really grasp the enormity of the creator, of, of creation. And so you have to give yourself permission to have this personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with the divine. You don't need anyone to have that relationship. There is no authority in this world that has more, more ability to tell you how you should create, how you should um, have a relationship with source being. When I was younger, I went through a lot in my life, you know, and I, I, I'm very open about all of the things that I experienced in my, in my youth. You know, I didn't grow up with a father. I was raised by a single mother. Um, my father didn't want to have anything to do with me because he was married with children and he didn't want, <clears throat> he didn't want my existence to interfere with his life. And so he just had nothing to do with me. So my mother raised me on her own and being raised by my mother and then 
really being surrounded by mostly women in my life, um, I, I was more open and more aligned to sensitivity. I was more aligned to uh, an, a, an emotional flexibility of connecting with people, connecting with humans, connecting with emotional experiences of others. And growing up, I was a sensitive child, you know, and, and I don't shy away from who I am or what I am in this world. You know, I'm a gay man. And I realized this when I was much younger. But before I realized it, I was just a sensitive sissy. I was a person that didn't qualify to be considered a male. And the fact that I was different and that I was sensitive and that I was more connected to emotions made me a target for a lot of people. And I grew up being bullied and teased. Um, and I was bullied and teased and really just... Um, put through it by uh, my own family members, my own cousins, especially male cousins who are very much connected to that masculine, that toxic masculinity. Uh, because in, in the Hispanic culture, uh, unless you're really macho masculine guy, you're not a man. Uh, so I was shunned by my cousins um, in school. I was constantly teased and people had nothing but um, content for me. Um, and I wasn't a troublemaking child, I just existed. I existed and I represented something that people couldn't accept. As I started to grow and evolve, you know, I went through other challenges and issues. I was sexually molested by family members and by people that I trusted. I was um, physically abused. You know, my stepfather, the, the man whom my mother married, he was an awful person who took out his anger and expressed his fear through physical and through violence. So I went through a lot of these experiences. And on top of that, you know, having sisters that I didn't get a chance to grow up with. And then my mother, who at some point in, our, in my life, she had a, a psychotic breakdown and was hospitalized and institutionalized for some time. So I didn't understand a lot of things growing up as to the whys. Why is this happening? Why is that happening? Why am I going through this? Why are other children not having to go through this? Why are other children being treated like human beings? Why are other people treating, you know, these other individuals who fit within these accepted categories, accepted behaviors, accepted types? Why are they um, not being treated the way that I am? Um, and I wasn't a fighter. I didn't fight back. I didn't stand up for myself. I didn't know how. I only I was only conditioned to be a victim. And so I remained that victim mindset for many, many years in my youth. Um, and so as I began to get older and older, and I started to question, I was raised Catholic. Um, so I was raised in, in Catholic. I went to catechism. I got my first communion. But I questioned everything because even within the church, you know, even within the church, I was not accepted. And I mean, one of the people who molested me, who sexually, you know, took advantage of me was a pastor at a, at a church. So through my own experiences, it forced me to question everything, everything in my life. And I couldn't accept why these things were happening to me and why I was going through these things. You know, if I go to church and they say that we're supposed to treat each other a certain way, why am I not being treated this way by the people who are saying this? You know, if I'm supposed to be a child of God, you know, why am I being treated like I don't deserve to exist? As I got older and then I started to have my spiritual awakening in conjunction with my sexual awakening, which happened at puberty, and once I hit puberty, then you know all of the hormones start to rage, you start to find yourself drawn or attracted to people. And though I was raised, you know, as a straight male growing up and I had girlfriends growing up as well, but something was changing within me and I was being, I was attracted to males and I was aroused and drawn to males in a different way than with women. And I didn't understand what that was. And even within school, people would mock me, people would tease me, you know, they would call me by names, any name that they could think of, they would call me by. And I didn't understand that. I didn't even understand what those names meant other than I was just weak or feminine or not um, good enough. In, a, in one way or another, the words that were used were saying, you're not good enough. We don't accept you. You don't deserve to exist. So I couldn't accept that because there was something within me 
that when I saw myself in the mirror, when I, when I thought of myself, when I was aware of myself, I knew myself not to be an evil being or a, a horrible human you know, being. I didn't act out in ways that caused other people to suffer. I didn't try to hurt other people. I didn't even try to think of hurting other people. I just wanted people to stop and to just love me. That's all I wanted, just love. And all I could sustain in my life, all I could sustain within myself was love. And so that part of me within me that was based in love, based in the desire for connection from all others, felt something was off, something was wrong, something wasn't right. And the world was not reflecting what I was being taught in the church. My experience was not reflecting what I was told would be my experience. So I had to question everything. I had no choice. I had to question everything. And I was unwilling to betray myself. I was unwilling to not be who I was because that's all I, that's all I had. That's all that was solid and a constant in my life. So I began to question and I began to read many books, trying to understand who I was, what was my place here in this world and what did I have to offer? And could it be possible that I am not evil, that I am not bad, that I am not, that I deserve to exist, that I deserve love. Could it be possible that that is the case? Could it be possible that maybe what people believe or think about God may not exactly be 100% as accurate as they would prefer to believe? And when I began to question, that is when everything changed. Because in the questioning of my faith, in the questioning of what I was taught, I began to have a real relationship with God, a relationship that wasn't based in conditioned ideas, in, in, in philosophies that I didn't even grasp. Um, it wasn't based in what someone else believed to be the right versus the wrong. Anything beyond that was the right. So I questioned. And in the process of questioning, I really started to dig deep within myself and find a way to know God as myself, as who I was. And in the process, began to learn to accept who I was, began to learn to accept who I'm supposed to be in this world. That was a turning point and that shifted everything else in my life because the moment I began to accept God, not to embrace what I was taught, not to embrace the conditioning of the church, but once I began to embrace God as the experience of what truly is, that is when everything started to be revealed. And I started to receive, I started to have experiences that proved to me that I was more than this just this physical body and that I was capable of so much more than what we are, but we usually believe we're capable of. And abilities began to manifest. I began to see the future and I began to receive information that turned out to be prophetic. Um, some of that, the very first real experience saved my life. I could have burned in a fire with no way out and I was saved because I accepted my connection to God as myself, as who I am. And so that is when it changed. And that, those experiences were so much more validating. They proved so much more to me without a shadow of a doubt than what I was given in the church. And I continued that path. I continued that route and I didn't stop. And to this day, I question everything. I even question myself sometimes. I question some of my beliefs and some of my ideas, some of my positions on things. Because if you don't have the capacity to question yourself, then you don't have the capacity to grow or change. And if you can grow or change, it starts with just questioning what you believe or what where you're starting from. So it's okay to question your faith. In fact, I don't think that you can have a strong faith without going through a period of questioning. That is one of the things that is required for true faith to reveal itself. Some people believe, oh, faith means, you know, if I just trust in the power of Jesus Christ or if I trust in and he is my savior, I'm like, mm, you're limiting your experience. You're limiting your divinity. You're limiting yourself by holding on to that belief because that is simply a stand-in. That is just a representation of the deeper teaching. It is not the full depth of understanding that was given. 
at the time it was shared. So you limit your ability to connect with the divinity and you instead reduce and disempower yourself and you start to tell yourself you're not as good. You're not, you're, you, you are born of sin and so you aren't worth anything. You do not deserve to exist. Your existence is an offense to God. I'm here and I haven't ceased to exist. And in all of the questioning and in all of the moments where I have done exactly the opposite of what has been taught in the gospels, of what has been taught in the church. I have actually experienced more love, more compassion. I've seen it and witnessed it more so than by following the words blindly without full understanding and awareness of what they meant. So I am a huge advocate for questioning your faith and starting there. And then in the process of questioning your faith, ask God, to show up. Ask God, say, who, who are you? What are you? How are we connected? What am I with you? What are you within me? Reveal yourself fully. Reveal yourself in my experiences. Reveal yourself in others. You know, demand it of, of the divine, demand it of God, because it is asking you to demand it. That feeling inside of yourself that does not connect with the traditional teachings of the churches, of the, re the religious practices, that summoning within yourself. It is asking you to step into your power, to step into your divinity, to accept the reality that you are God in witnessing form and experiential form here on this physical plane. And the moment you engage that and you begin to ask for more, you will receive it and you will see it and you will witness, you will become witness to many miracles. And I, I, I know this because I have witnessed, I have witnessed to many miracles in my life, to many things that that happen that there's just there's no way that could have happened on its own without any sort of divine alignment or intervention and i i share as often as i can with y'all what i witness what i experience in my life and people may say you you have a very charmed life or why are these little things happening in your life they're not happening in mine why are you having all of these synchronicities why does it feel like the universe is working with you is is helping you is 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 serving you and i'm like no it's not it's not that the universe is helping me or serving me or or doing for me it is that i am willing to engage with that part of myself that is god and I am willing to accept what is given, what is what is granted. And I'm willing to go with it and go with that flow and go along for the ride. And in the process of going along with it, you align to God consciousness. You align to the divinity within yourself. And then you will start to become a branch of the tree of knowledge and wisdom of source. And you will see things happen in your life that you did not think were possible. A lot of people, and, and this brings up, you know, some of the ideas around manifestation, law of attraction, synchronicity, alignment, all of that, which is all part of the creative process. It's all part of the manifestational process. You know, people say, oh, God, you know, life is an accident. Everything's an accident. Everything is chaotic. And what I believe is, you know, there has to be a, co there has to be a coordinated chaotic effort to bring forth some of the incredible things that exist within creation. So I believe that everything is working for itself, even when we are not aligned. You know, people who find themselves falling into paths of fear, paths of anger, rage, hatred, you know, all of us, all of us, because we are all human. We all suffer the same human experience, but we are all capable of the same divine expression in this form. So when you think about that and when you begin to realize that a lot of people in this world are very disconnected they're very very much in that amnesia state they've forgotten who they are they're caught up in the hustle and bustle of everyday life they're caught up in you know what how am i going to pay my bills today you know that is my focus for the day how am i going to have this relationship you know how am I going to make this relationship work for me? How am I going to have true love? How am I going to meet my soulmate? How am I going to have a child? How am I going to avoid my mother-in-law? You know, we think about these very human experiences. And when that occupies a majority of our mind, a majority of our um, energy, then it becomes our state of being. 
and we reside on that level of experience. We only exist there, but we are more than just the physical form. We are God consciousness in form, in human perspective. And so if you begin to question and you begin to seek past what is the basic level of suffering, you will reconnect and reawaken and remember who you really are. But there are a lot of people in this world who don't know this, don't understand this. They're not awakened. And that's okay. That is their path. That is their journey. You know, it would be wonderful for all of us to be on the same page, but we are all not on the same page. Some of us grasp this truth, this authentic nature. Some of us grasp this very differently from others. Some of us only choose to live on the surface planes. Some of us do not question. We, we align with what is given and we submit. We, we, we become the, the soldier of, of information. We become the obedient one. And we do that with our brothers and sisters on this planet. We do this with each other. We allow ourselves to be disempowered and accept what others have given us because they are the authority. But we are the ultimate authority when it comes to our relationship with God. Neither the church, nor the highest priest, nor the highest spiritual body in this world has more authority over your choices, over your engagement, over your experience of the divine of God, of source. No one. And the moment you accept that, the moment you allow yourself to be at peace with that, then you begin to resume your power. You step back into your throne. You reawaken in ways that start with just very subtle shifts and changes and then become more and more and more. You know, a lot of people ask me, how can I be more spiritual? How can I, you know, evolve spiritually? And I'm like, well, start by just questioning your relationship with the universe, with God, with yourself. Start there and ask for the truth. Ask for it, because when you ask for the truth, it will be revealed to you. It will show up in a thousand and a million different ways in your life, and you can't negate it. You can't go against it. You can't dispute it, because it is it is overwhelmingly consistent. Um, and that's what I trust. I trust the consistency of creation showing me itself. I trust that. I don't trust as easily the words of another human, because all that comes through them is is reduced by their perspective by their lifetime by their by their individuality it doesn't mean that it doesn't hold no value it doesn't mean that there isn't any any depth to it or that they can't teach me something it just means that it is still limited by one by this one but there you know when you think of source and of god it is this all in one package that is represented by the individuals we all are but it's an all in one package and so you can take the words of, of one who puts themselves into a position of authority and says, I am the authority in this world. You know, you have religious organizations, you have people walking around in this world acting as if it's, it's either their way or the highway um, and the highway of death, the highway of non-existence, the highway of suffering. And in doing so, they turn their backs on God themselves because they have immediately and instantaneously separated themselves from the creation because we all exist if we didn't if we weren't meant to exist we wouldn't be here i wouldn't exist we all exist we all deserve to be here and the moment that you negate any part of the creation you turn your back on the creation and its creator and you turn your back on yourself in the moment so this is why it's so important that even when we have differences amongst ourselves, even when we see things very differently or understand things very differently, my life experience may be different from another person's life experience. But regardless, those experiences should allow us the opportunity to connect more with each other, not to negate each other's ability or, or negate each other's desire to, to be negate each other's right to be. And that's important. So we won't always get along. We won't always agree. We won't always see things eye to eye because we are individuals. We're, we're individuations of the divine, but we are very much confined within the experiences of our life, within the perspective that we hold. But if we can try to reach out 
to connect with each other, if we can try to understand each other from the human perspective, which is what Christ talked about. You know, if, you know, it is you who see the divine in each other. It is you who embrace love and compassion because love and compassion are uniting forces in, in reality, in our experience, in the universe, in creation. You know, compassion, love, cooperation, they unite us. Fear, anger, hatred, they separate us. And when you get so caught up in the world and everything that is happening every day and in all of our individual superficial experiences, then we become victims. We become submissive to the experience of fear, to the experience of hatred, to the experience of anger. And people who are afraid, who are angry, who are really just caught up in that, their only understanding of changing that, of reducing that experience for themselves is not by embracing love, compassion, cooperation. It's by embracing control. How can I control the fear? How can I control the hatred? How can I control the lack? How can I control and reduce that instead of embracing the thing that is not those things? Um, and that's the trick. That's the, the magical solution. So when you're dealing with people in this world and they have nothing but bad things to say to you or about you, I'm not saying you shouldn't defend yourself. I'm not saying that you shouldn't act in favor of yourself and express yourself in a way that reflects the integrity of your relationship with the divine, the integrity of the fact that you are divine being in form. I'm not saying you shouldn't defend that or that you shouldn't express that fully in your response and your reactions. But when you spend more time focused on defending, more time focused on engaging with that energy, it becomes a part of who you are. It becomes a part of your nature. By embracing fear, by embracing hatred, by embracing ignorance and acting out of control, the need to control, you also become that which you engage most often with. So it's important to know where your energy is going to go and where you want to focus your time and yourself in your life on a regular basis, on a daily basis. And if you just remember, even just once a week, which is why Sundays are so important, once a week, just remembering that you are divine in form, that you have God within you, that you are the authority in your life, then you will have an incredible experience that validates and affirms the consciousness of God within this reality, within creation, and within yourself. And you will see miraculous things that you did not possibly conceive were possible. Okay?